Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 300. Who would have thought we would have got to episode 300? Um, with us tonight, um, we have um, uh, Ashok Panda. Ashok uh, is an SEO, he's proud to call himself an SEO. He hails from Germany, formerly from India. Um, Masataki Wasser is um, webmaster of wasserweb.net. Um, he's also a Google top contributor on the uh, um, Google uh, AdSense uh, community. Um, Masataki is based in uh, uh, Wimbledon in London. Richard Hearn is based uh, in Thailand. Um, he uh, um, he's, he can be found at uh, redcardinal.ie. Um, Richard deals in um, upper echelon sites. You, you like that, <laughs> Richard? Um, and um, yeah, uh, he, he's uh, been a big supporter of. Uh, our um, our group. Um, we don't see enough of him. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, next, uh, David Rosam. Uh, David uh, is uh, um, an internet marketer. He's uh, been a, an SEO copywriter for 12 odd years, a copywriter for 30 odd years. He's based on the southern uh, um, tip of England um, and Tim Capper uh, oh, you can find David at writing for ICA.org Tim Capper is um, uh, CEO of onlineownership.com he's a local SEO specialist he is uh, a Google top contributor on the Google my business uh, community all right, I just wanted to say what a privilege, privilege it is uh, to um, um, be part of um, Dumb SEO Questions with you guys. And, uh, um, yeah, 300 episodes. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for letting me be part of it. All right, um, we have about 10 questions tonight. And... Um, it shouldn't, they, they, they uh, don't look um, all that hard. All right, uh, let's um, get cracking with them. Um, the the um, first question uh, is, uh, will linking to websites that don't have valid SSL certificates hurt ranking? take my hat off to Chrome, the Chrome team to uh, the, the way that they have gulled everybody uh, into thinking that, um, oh, anyway, I'll, 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 actually, I should be listening to you guys. Uh, let, let, let me see what you guys have to say. It's from Neil Cheeseman. He said, re-external links outbound and relevant to the web page content uh, to websites that don't have valid SSL certificates does this have any uh, impact on SEO? Should these be no follow, or are they fine and leave? They should be left as is. I don't see a problem in linking out to a site that's not that doesn't have an SSL certificate. Um, you know, if it's a good resource, an additional resource, yeah. Uh, it is an interesting one, isn't it, when uh, Google has been uh, pushing us, I was going to say persuading us, should we say pushing us into um, getting SSL certificates everywhere? Um, and associating it with trustworthiness. Um, 
I don't think I would worry at the moment, but um, I, I can see why Neil has asked this. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, go ahead. You have to assume, though, even in the future, if they try to push more people to SSL, which they may do, that they're not going to necessarily penalize anyone for linking to HTTP, which would then redirect to HTTPS. So I doubt that the protocol will ever be a part of some sort of penalty algorithm or anything like that. I doubt it will. I think it would require a fairly large sea change to the internet. So I'd say leave as is unless you've got free time in your hands to do it. And otherwise, yeah, don't worry. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, yeah there's tons of stuff. I mean, I just found Oxford University, you know, on a not secure site. So, um, and, you know, you may be, they may have written something about you. You may be linking back to them or whatever the case may be about some technical paper you wrote for them and they not, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't really see it being an issue. Uh, it may be an issue if that site ultimately at some point, well, SSL or not becomes, you know, hacked or malicious. Um, but that's another story. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I mean, the general public, the, the average John doesn't realise that an SSL certificate doesn't make a site secure. Um, this is just Google, uh, well, my, my, my thinking is that Google is promoting SSL certificates so that uh, it, it, um, um, scales down that their attack interface i mean spammers can spin up uh, sites um, you know a hundred an hour but uh, if if it requires uh, an ssl certificate to to be valid um it it's going to uh, slow them down yeah i mean i i really hate this this incorrect messaging that's come out uh, because you even see it with banks now, you know, um, you even see banks going, oh, you know, keeping you safe online. Don't go to a thing, you know, or, or don't, uh, you know, don't, don't purchase anything online that, that doesn't have the, the HTTPS. And I'm like, yeah, that is such wrong information because <laughs> fraudsters just, just as easy as anyone can, can have their, their site, you know, can get an SSL certificate and your money just, you know, the only thing that's secure is the fraud is, is <laughs> the fraud that's taking place is secure. It really winds me up this, this, I wouldn't say it's disinformation, but misinformation and correct understanding of it. It's really, really bad. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, will we move on to the next with this one? I'm going to record that as a yes. Um, here we are. Uh, Jason, Jason Hyung Chul Kang asks a question. It's titled Backlinks Coming from an Unrelated Website. Uh, Jason asks, should I disavow links coming from an unrelated website outside my niche slash industry? Uh, even though they have a, a 50 plus uh, domain authority. I heard relevancy is very important. So do I remove them or just keep them? I would keep them. Um, I don't think, uh, unless there's there's something uh, evil about this, this here site that's linking to you. Um, the, the relevancy thing is, uh, is, part of this idea of building um, building links, which is, uh, as we said many times uh, on this Hangout, uh, not a good idea. Um, 
you attract links rather than build them roughly so um don't worry um un unless unless you've got a, a good reason to think that there's there's something very dodgy about that site uh, don't bother with disavowing them yeah i agree with that as long as the domain as a whole you know if you do if you if you you check it out is is it looks okay um that, and they're not participating in anything um unsavory um then yeah you know someone someone wrote about you um from a different kind of niche um i know i i've published stuff uh to do with um uh, obviously for small businesses but um helping them get grants now that's nothing to do with marketing or, or seo but i've i've you know i've put out a resource to help small businesses find funding um so that's more in the financial realm and you know entirely up to them if they want to disavow in you know a link coming from me but um it, it just made sense so they may have had a you know a proper a reason um to 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 uh write about you um but as long as you know their 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 domain is 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 okay and and you know as a whole then yeah i think i think that's fine like david said i don't i don't see a reason to disavow i'm just going to add one i'm just going to say that if you're not really sure what you're doing um, I would never disavow or try and remove any links to your site. There's probably more chance you'll do damage than good. Um, relevancy is important, but it doesn't mean that, that there's some sort of ir irrelevancy filters or algorithms um, that are checking to see and saying, oh, this link is coming from a site that isn't as relevant to yours as, as we would like it. Um, there are algorithms that look for unnatural linking, but that's a different thing altogether. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, David. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's um, move on to the next. And unless anyone wants to add anything. Okay. Our next um, is from Saurab Mather. Um, he asked the question, are private blog networks, PBNs, worth it still in 2018 it's on it's from our uh, um our uh, community on google plus only if you're the person who, or the company who set it up um keep away from them unless you have some interest in the uh in the pbn um because they're not going to help you and you'll end up spending money um for no reason and no uh and no advantage so um the short answer is no so on the flip side of this <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the flip side of this you know a lot of publishing houses out there vogue vogue magazine you know uh, um Vogue, all those fashion, all those fashion magazines, which are obviously online now. Those are essentially they're all owned by the same company. They are all online, obviously. But those are essentially PBNs, right? High class ones, but they're PBNs. Uh, all these lifestyle magazines, house and home, country living. All, all, all of those interior country style, you know, all those uh, interior style selling home location, all of those owned by the same company, different brands, but they're all interlinked, they're PBNs. It's what you are doing with them and how you are using them when it falls into the realm of private blog networks, using them for, you know what I mean? So, this this is like different ways of looking at this if you are saying our private blog networks still worth it in 2018 because i want to set up a magazine publishing conglomerate globally that's going to produce the best editorial um content in its niche market 
that's going to take on Rupert Murdoch's Sky News, well then, yeah, go for it. If you're thinking, yeah, hey, our PBNs where I'm going to like set up a couple of little domains, interlink a two, da, 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 well then, you know, you, you're pissing into the wind, quite frankly. But, you know, it depends on how you're looking at it and it depends what you want to do with it and, and, and how you're going to, uh, you know, move it forward in terms of, um, you know, monetizing that kind of uh, system or network. Yeah, but people have, have been doing this. I mean, it, what, what was the name of that company, Halo? Um, the, the, the company that we was going to change the world with the um, content production and that they gave us all those crappy websites. Where are they now? Yeah, but did I say uh, build crap? Yeah, but they didn't. Uh, they did. They did that. They, they it wasn't crap. It was really, you know. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, Marvelous either, but it, it, it would be no different than using um, a whole heap of journos to create a, a, a Rupert Murdoch type uh, conglomerate. Um, but um, the, when, when they became a problem, Google just wrote them out of the algo. Yeah, but that would have been, uh, there, there would, the, but then there would have been if they if they had been nailed, they would have been it would have been through links, right? Oh, For, I don't know. Yeah, it um, would have, because yeah, it certainly would have been because of, because of the of of what they were doing links wise, and if they just gave up after not you know, then then that's their own problem. Well, they're, they're, they're just, they're, their traffic, organic traffic just went away. That was the thing. Um, they became not profitable. And uh, Well, they were, obviously, they were obviously doing something wrong because there's a shitload of newspapers out there that, that, that are all owned by the same person, that are all, in, you know, that, that are essentially fucking great big PBNs, and they are in the Google News day in and day out. So... I mean, I don't know the ones you're talking about. I don't know what they were doing incorrectly. Well, what wasn't it? Halo was is that the name of the the company that was doing it? Anyway, I, I just want to just jump in. I got cut off for a minute, so I missed part of uh, of Tim's uh, 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 discussion there. So, but I just want to just mention that, like, just to inject a little bit of reality here. There's all these big companies that do own these very big networks of sites, um, and yes, they do interlink. But these sites all stand on their own. And and let's just go back to reality and say where this PBN terminology came from. Um, PBNs were never about quality, you know. They were always about cheating. Like there's no two ways about it. So if someone is talking about PBNs, uh, they're not talking about setting up variety or whatever else. Okay, so let's be honest, it's all about risk and reward. And it's all about your tolerance to risk. If you want to go this route, and you've got a very high tolerance to risk, by all means, you might get a good return out of it. Um, but you just have to be eyes open to the fact that there's a huge risk with, with using these, these methods and these strategies that are, are, are you know, Google is, it, they hate, and they're looking out for all the time. If you're going to go with them, just be prepared, like, make sure that you're you understand the risks that you're taking. And and yeah, then sure, if you want to go for it. Um, I don't know though, these days, if you're not really, if you don't really know what you're doing with this, um, the return you're going to get out of this is probably going to be negative. Um, because unless you're very clever and you have a lot of history of doing this sort of stuff and you know what works now and what doesn't, uh, the chances that you've been detected are, I would say, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's probably not even probability, it's probably a certainty. Um, just it, it's not worth it and i mean i don't think it, it's not really helpful to start talking about these big network sites that are that you would like to refer to as been pbns like they're just they're never going to get dinged for anything because they're not doing anything wrong 
Thank you. Where's the, where's the trust gone? You don't, you, you, you just, there's that, like, not that trust that, 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 um, Sir Rob is questioning, like, the validity of a, of a really great <laughs> conglomerate. <laughs> Like I say, it depends on his on his on his risk outlook and, and how much risk he's willing to take on board. And also he has to define what, what's the what's the possible return from this. And then he's got to weigh that up against the opportunity cost of potentially losing quite a lot of time and money by setting all this up. And he may make money for a little while, then he may get dinged, and then he's back to square one and he may be actually back to before square one because maybe he's on someone's radar then and people are gonna watch what he's doing, you know? I mean you got to remember that when you become, when you venture onto the dark side and Google figures out who you are, they're going to fingerprint you and they're going to be watching for you. You know, they don't just, you don't get to turn over a leaf because they caught you and you say, right, I'm going to be a good guy from now on. If, if you get caught for something egregious, they're going to fingerprint you and they're going to watch what you're doing. Okay. And you've got to start a hell of a lot of new things from scratch to, to, to try and lose that history you've created for yourself. So just, you know, it, like I say, it's, it's all, it's a personal, a personal and a business decision, whether you want to take on the risk and whether the reward is worth it. That's all. Love it. All right. Um, let's move on. Any, anybody else want to add anything to that? Okay, uh, let's go to our next one. This one from Ayut Ewer Riemann on how to earn high quality backlinks. Don't know. I hope you all answer this one. I really do because it's it's a it's one of these sort of questions. It's sort of like how do I turn on my computer? <laughs> Just provide the great value with your content and maybe some innovation, then you automatically gain. People will start linking you once they find out that you are providing value or great content or something which is not provided by others. Either they try to steal your content or idea or they start linking you. These are the two, two things. So just provide a high, high quality material or innovative ideas. Keep doing that continuously. You will automatically earn high quality backlinks. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's in your question. How do I earn them? Essentially, oh, well, oh, he said, how do I create them? Yeah. How do I earn them? Create, yeah. How to create and how to earn. Yeah. No, yeah. They're completely, completely different. <laughs> the, the, the how to earn was my suggestion to him, Tim, but he didn't come along and change it later. No, no. Well, yeah. I mean, you can write a book about this, yeah? You could have a, you could have a, a college course a third degree college course on this. I mean, this there's no there's no if it was if it was so simple to just do this or to just answer this, everyone would be doing it. You know, I mean, you've got to go out and figure out this for yourself. You have to learn this. This isn't something that someone can answer. You know, in a, in a sound bite. You, you, you know, you can try, but there's oh, yeah. anyway. Look, I'll I'll be quiet. So. I think what you need to what you need to do is so you need to figure out your audience and you need to figure out their need, right? Um, and you probably want to start looking at some kind of, you know, marketing course. Uh, look at Haslow's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Dive into a little bit of the psycho psychological element of it, right? And um, once you start understanding what your your audience's needs are, then you can produce that type of content. Uh, but you need to do the, you need to do the research. You need to put the work in. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, since Ayit uh, didn't uh, change his question, um, we've got no more time for him. That's your lot, mate. All right, let's go to the next one. Jason Hyen, Chul Kang. Um, bad content with backlinks versus good content without backlinks, which will rank better, um, is the title. Oh, 
God, you, uh, Richard's going to kill me. Um, is it true that you can rank bad content with links but cannot rank good content without links? Thoughts on this? Um, I'm, I'm not trying to make you angry, guys. I'm just playing them as they were, were, were picked up from the uh, um, Dan SEO questions uh, based group and the SEO uh, questions group on Google+. Plus. Please go ahead. It's not so bad, but isn't it sad that, like, People have to like that. They have to ponder this type of thing. I mean, it is it is a bit sad that you know over all these years that we've been involved in SEO, that sort of Google let it get to the point where people had to ask these types of questions, or more importantly, that they have to worry about these sort of things. I mean, hindsight is is a great thing, and it's easy to 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 like to go back and highlight the faults or the the errors that were made. But it is sad that people have to worry about this sort of thing, you know? And I mean, I know Google, if someone was from Google was here, they would just say, no, no, just focus on your content, create great content. And really, they're probably right, but you do have to, to some extent, you've got to market that content so that people see it. I mean, there's a chicken and egg scenario whereby if you're starting off afresh and you just keep on putting up great content, if nobody sees it, nobody will link to it. And that's one of the fallacies of, of, of Google's link-based algorithms is that they, no matter what they say, everything requires links. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, but yeah, I mean, bad content with backlinks versus good content without backlinks. I mean, I don't understand where they where they're even coming up with this theory that they would have bad link, bad content with backlinks. I mean, are they investing in this content, or I mean, are they buying? Did someone offer to sell them bad content with backlinks versus good content without? I just I have no idea where they're getting these these ideas, which will rank better. Mm. I'd say I good content. What, yeah, what they mean by bad content is maybe thin content or not adequate content per page. So maybe they they just mean that very very thin content. That's what he means by bad content. It doesn't totally all relevant content or. Which is not, which is completely um, irrelevant or maybe related to adult content. Those kind of content maybe he's talking about. No, that that might be the case, but I mean, good and bad are are just subjective terms. They're the most objective terms you can come up with. So it's very difficult to know what he's referring to here. I mean, it's it's you know what's good and what's bad. I mean, it's very difficult to know. There are two basic truisms at work here, I think. Uh, one is you can't put lipstick on a pig, and the other is you can't polish a turd. Um, you can. I think they both <laughs> apply. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, start off with something good. Don't start off with something bad. Uh, it's a very... <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, the, and I mean, the other thing, you, you think about how search has evolved. And for sure, in the old days, it was all link-based. But now, you know, you've got so many features in search that probably are less uh, less inclined to take into account the links that are pointing to that content. I mean, featured snippets. You can definitely pick up featured snippets. OK, you need to have some authority in your site. But you can definitely pick up something like featured snippets or some of the other features within search just by using particular uh, features within your HTML or on your site. So there's definitely more opportunity nowadays than there was 10 years ago. Um, but you know, there's an awful lot more content to compete with also now than there was 10 years ago. So I mean, I think you could flip this one back and forth many times over. I mean, I see Michael Martinez there. I mean, I think he's given this sort of answer, which is it's a little bit, uh, you know, I think, you know, you need to nuance his answer a little bit better there. I mean, the idea that you can rank any content without links, I think I know plenty of companies, very large corporations that work in very, very valuable niches that would love to take him on and allow him to rank their content without links. Um, best of luck to him. That's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, hello. I see we've been joined by uh, Micah Fisher Kirshner. He's uh, a head of SEO at uh, Turn River Capital in the United States. He's based uh, in Silicon Valley uh, um, on the west coast of the USA. 
All right, uh, let's move on from that. Um, all right, from Michael John, can anyone tell me about doorway pages? I'm sure. I'm sure people decided to wind us up tonight. <laughs> I think it's an open and shut case. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Doorway pages are um, pages set up to uh, target particular um, particular key phrases. They're there for um, they are there f mainly for um, they're, they're mainly used for uh, for location type things. Um, and um, didn't Google completely stamp on them a while back and said they were penalizable? Um, so don't build them. Don't build uh, groups of pages that are just there to fill in gaps in the key phrases you're, um, you're targeting. Um, just create good content, as we keep saying. I yeah. suggest a question you get that is like this that has a, a, a help page in Google Webmaster. <laughs> Webmaster help. That you just put the link up. <laughs> And bingo. Uh. All right. Anybody else with a comment on this one? Am I the only one with sound, or um, um, is everybody else hearing me? Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next. This one from Anthony Siocchi. Uh, does my site need to be W3C validated to rank? Uh, Anthony said, hey, I have issues with HTML uh, that is not that W3C validated. Can I get some help? Uh, he gives a link, which can be seen on the dumb SEO questions group on Facebook um, and uh, he said here's the link for all the errors how bad is this and can this hurt ranking thanks in advance no yep no. <laughs> just no um, I mean there's there's obviously things of like bad code can like make it hard for the engine to understand your site but actual the nitty-gritty of check marking through all of the various w3c validations doesn't matter thank you Marga. yeah there's um that yeah that's there's Oh, a great example, actually, which uh, I was going to do a little thing on this, is um, Google Google My Business websites. So um, they're on a subdomain. <laughs> they are like they I, I don't they, I, I I don't even think they conform to anything. Uh, literally, I've never seen anything quite like it. However. That they once Googlebot understands the structure of them through the amount of pages and, and the same format, et cetera, et cetera. Over time, once it understands it, it does, it, you know, it does pretty well for itself. So, yeah, I mean, your site can be pretty, pretty messy, and Google will still try and figure out, you know, what, you know, figure out what's on your site. Um, what it's about they they and, and Google does in, in fairness. It does a pretty good job at understanding pretty terrible sites Yeah, I think the important thing is that browsers different types of browsers um, Render your pages correctly. I think that's the best way to check if the um, If the errors are such that your site is not rendered properly, then that's a problem. But otherwise, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, the point about accessibility, I think, is important. If you have a well-structured website, I think it does help. 
um, in terms of accessibility, and that's a desirable thing in itself. But um, in terms of answering the question, say no. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay, we'll move on from this one. Uh, this one from Abindra Raj Dengal. Um, it's titled, Is it good to make every external link no follow? Um, guys, uh, he said, uh, my, my dumb SEO question for the day. Is it good to make every external link no follow? What will Google's perspective be on these websites? Thanks in advance. I'm sure he means um, on his website. Um, but anyway. Well, they, it's not that it's per se not, I, I mean, I personally don't think it's going to be directly harmful, but it's not good um, implication if, if uh, you don't trust who you're looking out to across the board. Um, there's not really a need, um, in my opinion, for, for something like that. Um, if you don't trust the site, you just don't have to link to it. Um, and so it's better to actually like uh, to actually link to sites that you're, you're referencing, provided of course that you're not doing it for a sponsored link or any of those types of things. Um, I, it's definitely not a good thing. I'm just saying that it's not necessarily a uh, detriment. So my view is to just it's not worth spending the time to add all that extra no follows to all these external links when you, you can help reference and as well kind of in theory make the web a bit of a better place by providing some of the value or sites to sites you actually find to be worthwhile. Thank you, Micah. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, it. Why would you do it? I think that would be the first question. Um, and if you blanketly no following all external links, then what's the point? Essentially, you're demonstrating that you don't know the difference between the editorial links out from your sites and paid. All right, so let's um, move on from this one. Oh, it's that time again. We've done it again, guys. Um, we have answered uh, all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus and the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time um, next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but uh, and until then, um, 